G'day and welcome and I have a bit of a, an unusual treat in store for you today it's to share about a book that I purchased from overseas and which arrived two days ago it's one that I've wanted to obtain for some time and it is a reproduction a little difficult to read but a reproduction of a book that was published in 1557 quite some time ago. It's called The Whetstone of Wit by Robert Record. Now elsewhere, certainly on my Facebook page, I've mentioned that I learnt first of all about this gentleman when I was at university, not at school, but when I was at university I met a young lady there, a very nice young lady, called Marinelle Record. And Marinelle uh, was a girlfriend of a friend of mine and Marinelle told me that she was the great, 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 great something granddaughter of this man, Robert Record. And that he was the man who created the equal sign, which he did. And uh, I'm going to, I've got the page in front of me here, which I have scanned and will be on your screen now. And you will notice that when he writes the equal sign that it is extraordinarily long. He says, how be it for each alteratio, I'm not sure what he means by that, I'm, look I'm not a, a scholar of these times, of equations, I will propound a few examples because the extraction of their roots may the more aptly be wrought and to avoid the tedious repetition of these words is equal to, I will let, as I do often in work something, a pair of parallels or, now this gemo I know is the word for two that existed in those days, or two lines of one length thus, because no two things can be more equal. And now mark these numbers, and by numbers he means these equations, and um, he's got some interesting equations there. First let me draw your attention to the length of the parallel lines. Uh, this was the first time in print that we see these parallel lines. Robert Record invented them, and they were adopted uh, ultimately all over the world. And they are the most marvellously useful tools, or that symbol is a marvellous tool. Where would we be without solving equations? Well, they used to solve them with words. And you used to have to write the word equals in Latin or whatever. I want you to also notice in the equations below that he uses plus and minus signs, quite long ones, horizontally, he was also the first person to probably not use them in England but to popularise them in England. Uh, from what I've been able to read they seem to have been invented or developed in Europe and particularly in the area around what we now know as Germany. And uh, I want you to realise that our plus and minus sign and our equal sign are not that old. This is less than 500 years ago. So this is new. And I also want you to look at the first equation. Now, I'm going to write it on the board here, but I want you to notice, this is some good history for you here. He has written the number 14 with a full stop, and then he's got this funny Z shape with a loop on it like that. And then he's got a long plus, and then 15, and now he's got a funny shape like that, equals 71 with a dot, and now funny shape again, sorry I should have a little curl on the end of it, there you go. That's the first equation, and I'll put the second one under it here, because I think that you'll be fascinated when you realise what you're looking at.
102. Sorry. We... Okay. Fascinating, fascinating. This, by the way, is in a chapter of Cossack numbers or Cossack numbers. And the word Cossack back then was the word they used for algebra. They didn't call it algebra then, although uh, we do today based on Al-Karitmi's work, uh, which in Arabic has the terms Al-Jabba. Um, I, I can't quote you the whole thing. I don't speak Arabic. But uh, Al-Karitmi, the an Arabic man was the first to properly formulate algebra. And um, this is centuries and centuries later. It is algebra, but it's in a slightly different form than we're used to. Whenever uh, Robert Record used this symbol, all it means is the number in front of it is a number. It's not uh, 71 lots of some other value, it's just 71 as a number. This symbol simply means we have 14 things we don't know about. So, as surprising as it is, in today's language this would be a year 8 question, a question for about a 13 or 14 year old student. This would read 14x, because we would use x as an unknown, plus 15, which is just a number, equals 71, which is just a number. There you go. This would be 20 times an unknown, minus 18, which is a number, so we just leave it as 18, is 102, which is just a number. And I'll put the... Uh, page back on the screen again, on the next question down, you'll see that there's 26 with a Z shape after it that curls back on itself, and that symbol represented what today we would know as X squared. So the next few questions are really quadratic equations, and he proposes to show us how to solve them, or to show his readers in England how to solve them. And there you go. Robert Record, introducing... Arabic numerals, Hindu Arabic numerals, or popularising them in England, popularising the use of the plus and minus sign and introducing for the very, very first time the equal sign. And here we are learning to solve algebraic equations. Now, obviously, there were mathematicians solving much more complex ones than this. Uh, in fact, in about 100 years after this, 110 years roughly, uh, so Isaac Newton was in, inventing the integral and differential calculus, and Gottfried Leibniz as well. And Newton was working on his optics and such like, and his theory of gravitation, and his laws of motion, the Principia Mathematica and so on. That was only about 110 years after this book was published. Uh, it was a time of great revolution in mathematics, and I encourage you, if you have a, a love for or a passion for understanding how mathematics works and how we as humans have invented symbols to try to put our, our thought patterns on paper and to think about these patterns, uh, getting some of these old books is a very worthwhile exercise to try to read the original and follow the thought processes. It's quite quaint English. Um, rather enjoying the little bit of reading I'm doing. And let me say that I had a student yesterday that uh, we solved these, I showed the book to, and we solved these exact equations. In fact, it might have been on Friday the evening, shortly after I got the book in the mail. But there you go. I hope you enjoy that little excursion into uh, let's say some Middle Ages slash Renaissance mathematics. And as always, I thank you for watching.